The new map is out guys, and it's one of, if not the hardest maps to get started on. So today I'm going to be going through 10 things that you need to know to make your experience on Genesis just a little bit easier. These tips are going to be in no particular order, and some are definitely a lot more helpful than others, so make sure that you watch through the entire video so you don't miss out. So we're going to start by going over something that I see a lot of misinformation going around, and that's silica pearls. Um, I've seen a lot of people complaining that the ocean biome is so big, yet it has no pearls, and that's just not the case, guys. The reason that you're having trouble finding them, if you are, is because they have changed the way that the node looks for pearls on this map. It's actually these big clam-looking things that are found all over the ocean biome, and they can be picked by hand as well as on an angler. I'm not sure how these exactly stack up to normal pearl nodes, but you do get raw fish meat as well, so you know, do with that information what you will. But yeah, this is what the silica pearl nodes look like, and they can be harvested by hand as well as with an angler. Now the next thing that I'm going to mention really quickly, uh, I've already made a video separately on this, but uh, just for anybody who hasn't seen that, if you're trying to get tech unlocked, if you're unofficial or a unofficial where you already have tech and you've been able to transfer your character in, you're going to want to buy either the tier 2 or tier 3 loot crate because that is the only way to get the tech replicator at the current moment. It has a 100% drop chance, so you don't have to worry about rolling multiple times for it, and you can get more than one if you need more than one. However, if you do destroy it by demolishing it, you do not get any resources. So don't bother stacking up on these if you want to try and like use it as some way to get a mass amount of resources quickly. Alright, so next we're going to talk about how Plant X is uh, obtained in this DLC. So there's these special bushes that are just like narco bushes, and uh, primarily they're going to drop narco berries. But if you use a tame or get very, very lucky harvesting them by hand, you will eventually get Plant X seeds. Uh, it's basically about as uncommon as getting Plant Species X seeds over on Extinction, if you guys remember that, back when Extinction first dropped and it was clustered off. So you're going to have to farm really hard to get these. Also, if you live in the bog biome, I wouldn't even bother getting Plant Species X because from what I'm hearing, the swarms of the bugs actually destroy all crops. So it's not really effective for the bog biome in the first place. Uh, I would just stick to getting normal turrets and tech turrets if you have the engram for those as well. Alright, so this next one is actually uh, pretty obvious, but uh, for some reason it like eluded me for the first few days, and it's because I spent the majority of my time in the bog biome, so I just didn't notice. Uh, the teleportation uh, between biomes is actually color-coded, so if you're teleporting to the bog biome, it's going to be green. If you're teleporting to the ocean biome, it's going to be blue. If you're teleporting to the lunar biome, it's yellow, lava biome red, etc. And uh, the reason this is important is if you're going to be running away from somebody or if you're going to be teleporting back to your base during a raid or something like that, um, it does actually give away your position uh, pretty easily and people are able to figure out then where you're going. Um, also, if you're trying to follow somebody and you aren't going to be able to get to the teleportation bubble in time, um, the biomes are not that big and if somebody's teleporting out, then you will be able to see which biome they're teleporting to and you can just teleport to that biome as well. So that way you have a chance to at least find them. So what I would recommend is if you're going to use this as a means of escaping somebody, maybe just teleport to a biome that you don't traditionally go to and then teleport from that biome to your main. But if you don't really care, then just go ahead and teleport back to your main biome. Now this next tip is extremely important for the early game on this map, and that is that every single time that you do a new mission on any difficulty, you're going to get a lot more hexagons than doing it on any subsequent tries after completing it. So as you guys can see here, completing Dodo Basketball for the first time on Gamma gives about 1800 hexagons. However, upon repeating the challenge, you only get like 75 hexagons, so it's really not worth it to replay this mission. Early on in the first couple days, Dodo Basketball actually was giving a lot more hexagons, but now it's really not worth repeating it once you've completed it. Um, even on the alpha, I believe you only get 900. So just keep that in mind. What I'd recommend is just going through and doing as many of these missions as you can um, just to complete them the first time through, and then you'll have a good amount of hexagons to work with until we find a mission that's very easy to repeat that you can get a lot of hexagons from. 
And while we're over here at the Dodo Basketball Court, I'm going to take this time to tell you guys the next tip, which is that these mission terminals are your only way to transfer in and out and upload and download things. So if you are on a server that has transfers enabled already, or if you're trying to transfer your character on official back to your main server or off to another map to learn engrams, you have to get to one of these mission terminals. That's why the buildable areas around missions uh, is not a thing on official, so that way people can get in and out of the map. So if you guys were wondering how you transfer off, that's how you do that. So the next thing that I want to talk about is the mining tool. It's not only good at getting a mass amount of resources early on, but it also reduces the weight of resources in your inventory when equipped. So as you guys can see, the resources are the normal weight at the moment, but the second that I equip the mining tool and enter my inventory, the weight has been reduced by 75%. Now this is not limited to just resources that you get while using the mining laser. You can also get a weight reduction on the same items from other sources. So if for example, you go to your HLNA and you purchase some stone, as you guys can see, the weight on that stone that is purchased is also reduced. So it doesn't matter if you're farming you know, resources with teams, this is still going to be very useful for moving stuff around your base or getting it back to your base once you're done farming. All right, so this next tip is something that I found pretty early on, but I still haven't seen a lot of people talking about, and that's that the HLNA has a built-in feature where if you press the H key while looking at a wild dino, I'm not sure what it is on console, um, so uh, I don't know which key it would be for that. If anybody knows, make sure to put it in the comments. But if you press the H key on PC while looking at a wild dino, it shows you the exact stats for that dino. So as you guys can see here, this works with both tamed creatures and wild, but but this will not work on dinosaurs that are owned by other tribes. So this is going to be extremely useful for when you're scouting for dinos that you want to tame uh, because you're going to be able to see the exact stats. You won't be able to see the point values, but then you can take those stats and extrapolate them into a program like Dodo Dex and see exactly how many points a dino has in melee or weight or HP before you knock it out. So I'm actually really happy they added this. This is something that I've been looking for for a long time and uh, hopefully you guys uh, can get some really good use out of this and it'll help you guys get your breed lines started. All right, so this next uh, tip isn't really so much of a tip as it is something that I don't see a lot of people mentioning that I feel like needs to be talked about. And that's that this map has actually added an additional dino that um, wasn't part of the like release dinos. And that's these um, tech trikes, which are found in the lunar biome. These are just another tech variant of a dino and they go up to level 180 just like the normal tech dinos. The key difference here being that the tech trike is using the same model as the corrupted trike from Extinction, which as you guys can see, the forehead on this thing is massive. So not only is it going to have additional stats and therefore the lines for these are going to be a lot better and overtake official ones pretty quickly, but also they'll probably likely be able to shield the rider from turrets that would normally hit the rider and also soak turrets that are higher up than a normal trike is capable of doing so. So definitely you're going to want to get a line of these started as soon as you possibly can because these are going to be very important uh, whether you're on Genesis or off. And last but not least, uh, might even arguably be one of the most important things for people on Genesis that I'm going to mention in this video. Uh, there are certain dinos found in the lunar biome that uh, some people don't really know are there. So those would be the Ravager, the Roll Rat, and the Carcanos. Uh, so as you guys can see, this is the Carcanos cave here on screen. I'll put the uh, locations to the other two caves uh, on screen now so you can see where those are located. But um, yeah, so if you go to these caves, they will spawn either Ravagers, uh, Carcanos, or Roll Rats, depending on which one you're in. The Carcanos one does seem to be very uncommon for it to spawn, at least for me in single player. I'm not sure if that's just due to the wild dinos killing the Carcanoses, or if it's something to do with like the spawns being less so that it's harder to get them. But uh, yeah, the Carcanos is going to be a very big help for a map that doesn't have flyers, and the Ravager as well will be very helpful for getting the metal and stone and things that you need really early on. So um, definitely you're going to want to come to the lunar biome and grab one of these as soon as you possibly can. Just be careful because there is the daytime radiation as well as the entire area is littered with defense units, flying drone thingies, and tech rexes. So it's very, very dangerous. 
make sure that if you come here that you're prepared. All right, well, guys, that's going to wrap things up for today. That's uh, 10 things that you need to know to help you guys survive on Genesis. There's a lot more to cover, so if you guys are interested in this, make sure that you let me know down in the comments. And if there's anything that I missed that you guys think needs to be in the next video, make sure to let me know down in the comments as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.